God's system of king, priest, prophet has not failed. There are still men that God has anointed. There are graces that can enthrone. This is not just for politicians. A man overnight, you can send one word. Was it not Elijah who said, by this time? You've heard the testimonies. This is, there's nothing in this ministry that is stage managed. I want you to pray that one prayer. What dimension do you see God lifting you? Pray that the grace and the unction that will make it happen. Just help those under the anointing. Please pray. Believe me, there are mighty angelic activities happening in this place now. Dimensions in ministry. Dimensions in business. Dimensions in governance. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. Please pray. Please pray. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. I want to pray for you now. He that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet. I want to pray for you. And I want you to believe what is coming upon you. You will command the supernatural. As many as we are here, so are our needs. And every dimension requires a grace. Therefore, I stand by the privilege of this election of grace. I stretch my hands from the north to the south. Barash Kadia. I'm telling you, I'm just in fire. This is what I'm saying. At the count of three, the unction required for the next season of your life. In the name of Jesus, help them please. At the count of three, like fire from heaven, it will come upon you. One, two, three. Take that grace now. Take that, help them please, my God. Take that grace now. Take that grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, take that grace now. Help that woman, please. Take that grace now. Superior anointings. Parike, take a attack. Man of God, woman of God, I call for the apostolic. I call for the prophetic. I call for the evangelistic. Receive that grace. Take that unction. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for those in business. That grace of an entrepreneur. The grace that can subdue systems and structures and give you visibility. May that anointing rest upon you now. May that anointing rest upon you now. The anointing that brings speed into the life of a man. Acceleration is a possibility in this kingdom. Therefore, I stretch my hands may that man to rest upon you now speed in destiny speed in your life help that woman please speed in your life i want to pray for you there is an anointing for influence and visibility you can do all you can and your generation will not know you are there but there is an unction that can come upon you 
and cause your voice to be heard i pray for everyone under the sound of my voice and for those who are following and connecting by faith for some of you this anointing you will literally feel something physically coming on you as i'm praying in the name of the grace for visibility right now right now may that unction come upon you may that unction come back May that grace come upon you. Let me pray for everyone here who is part of this spiritual family and you are into politics and governance. The grace that enthrones in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. May that unction rest upon you right now. Marvelously rest upon you right now. hear me when it has to do with wealth and abundance there are principles of productivity value exchange increase relationships negotiations and all these are valid financial principles but there is a prophetic dimension to wealth there is wealth that comes from heaven he said by this time tomorrow i want to pray for you because for many people and many families this is the area of engracing things have been tied in your life i want you to believe it don't let the devil tell you that there is no prophetic dimension to wealth and by a prophet the lord god brought israel out of egypt and by a prophet they were preserved i pray for you everyone who is in egypt financially hear the word of the lord i prophesy to you come out now come out now come out now the eyes that has refused to see you and favor you I open that eyes to see you the hand that has refused to whoever is responsible for partnership with the Holy Ghost for your rising by reason of this unction I declare your rising is confirmed now hallelujah hear me there are many of us who desire to walk in signs and wonders genuine miracles not fake stage managed miracles genuine healings genuine deliverance genuine signs and wonders some of you are here you are men of god some of you you are here into missions but it looks like there is no result some of you are even pastors and in all honesty you do not have consistent predictable ever increasing results by the privilege of the election of grace i stretch my hands towards you and i decree and declare by the power that raised christ from the dead step into the realm of the miraculous now the final impartation and we're done see believe me when i tell you honor and favor are real no matter how sincere you are no matter what level of character and integrity you have if you do not have the grace for honor and the grace for favor you will not go far believe me when i tell you this I want to pray that grace upon your life it was a grace i pursued with hunger in my heart and when it came i knew it had come take over take over i have come to the end of my 
Take over, Jehovah. I have touched. Something is happening in this place. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I have come to the end of my There is an anointing called the Esther anointing. It was in 2010. 2009 2010 god opened my eyes to this mystery of the esther anointing the grace that can pick you from shushan and put you to sit in the palace i stretch my hands right now may that mantle for honor and favor that came upon hadassah may that grace rest upon you now take that grace now take that grace now the grace that enthroned her man will not stop you in the name of Jesus Christ. From today, everything that represents shame, an embargo of shame and disappointment over your life, I tear it like a veil. In the name of Jesus Christ. hear me for some of you i prophesy to you between now and sunday i stand by the god of heaven and i decree and declare every day of this week will open you up to a new chapter of strange manifestation hear me by reason of this grace you carry there are battles you will not need to fight the jealousy of god will arise and fight it for you where your father could not cross where your mother could not cross hear me what limited your father what limited your mother what limited those who had gone ahead of you i stand by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic i scatter it before you right now I scatter it before you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody who has forgotten you because there were demonic manipulations that took you away from their memory they promise they will be there and help you but as it is right now you will pass them and it's as if they are not seeing you go back with this unction this night and watch the wonder walking power of jesus wave your hands to jesus and give him praise wave it to the king of kings wave it to jesus the king of kings and the lord of lords something has come upon your life you are waving your hands and you're allowing the anointing rest oh hallelujah we give you praise our lives will never be the same never be the same it will be proof that you are a people god has helped and god has blessed in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ now listen very carefully next week there will be fire from heaven to the earth in this place hallelujah not only because it is a miracle service for the month of february please any point of contact you have your documents court case issues whatever has mocked god this is not idolatry please you can come with it as a point of contact because i'm going to be praying on it this is a year of marvelous life there are some things that must end are we together now please be intentional about what i'm telling you and then let me challenge you in writing your prayer request don't be careless if you are a couple for god's sake you try this sit with your spouse or even your children and agree what are we use the power of unity 
in writing your request and see what God will do. Most times we just stand, husband is doing his own wife. You can sit down with God. I know the things God has already spoken to me about it. And I'll be praying and preparing my spirit. There are some things that need to shift. Are we together? Please make sure none of your loved ones misses this miracle service. And for those who cannot come, insist that they connect. There are documents, whatever it is. You are having trouble in your place of work. It looks like doors are opening or there are patterns in your life. And you are already seeing it happen again. Please write it down with faith in your heart. Your money is hanging somewhere. Your spiritual life is going down. Everything you put your hand to fails. Write it down. Let's see the God that answers by fire. Listen, let me tell you, God is determined this year more than ever before to give us visitations if our hearts are truly open to receive. And for those of you who have traveled from several nations to come here, please take this fire by all means back to your regions in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Oh God, you are my God and I will ever praise you oh God you are my God and I will ever praise you oh God you are my God and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning. I will learn to walk in your ways. And stand by that you lead me. And I will follow you. Let me tell you what is happening to you in Koinonia. Keys are given to you. Get me a bunch of keys if you can find any. You will get to a point, my brothers and my sisters, listen. You will get to a point in your life and your destiny when you will know that life is many rooms. And all those rooms need keys. Look at this. This is a bunch of keys. This is what God is giving you. You've gotten three already, but he said that you need to open 70 rooms to succeed. So you now have three. You need to catch up. But you keep dangling three and say, I have three. And he says, those three rooms are just toilets. I need to give you keys. Listen, these are the ones that will reign in life. They who have paid the price. Lord, my child can be a bad boy. So let me know in advance what is the key to restore a defaulting child. It may be too late. You don't get the key when you have the child. You get the key before you have the child. I don't pray that any arm robber will steal your car. But what if he steals the car? What is the key? So God continues. Look at what you are doing. He gives you a candle and he says keep sweeping and you are sweeping from one meeting to the other you are sweeping sometimes you say God I'm tired I've been sweeping for 10 years and I've just found four keys God will say a time will come you will find a bunch in one place you will not always pick one by one there are times when you will see many keys in one place let me tell you I submit to you this is what I've spent my life doing I'm like a spiritual archaeologist. Show me the keys. What are the keys to the anointing? I know I need this for ministry. I need this for life. And he says, hold the light and keep sleeping. You sleep from Genesis to Revelation. You start again. 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 You don't sleep once. Listen. 
So while you are sweeping, you will find a key. Sometimes you will not know that what you are looking at is a key till you come back to sweep again. All the keys don't look the same. Listen, listen to me. Please listen to what I'm teaching you. It is not, it is not every key that appears as a key. You will look at some keys and they don't look like it. And the Spirit of God will say, pick it. When you see the kind of door that this key will open, you will know. Let me tell you how you prepare for life. You hold your keys. And then when you begin to walk, you will see people who went ahead of you standing before certain doors. You, you thought they went ahead, but there they are marking time. They only opened two doors out of 50, and they are standing. And God says, now remember the key I gave you in 95. Bring it out. Open this door. Remember the key I gave you in 2001. During your retreat, I gave you a small key. Now this is the small door that the key opens. Step by step, you lead me, and I will all of my days. First it has been given unto you. To know, to know the keys of the kingdom. This is what we do business with in this kingdom. The keys. Our fathers who are gone ahead of us are called fathers because of this. When you check them, some of them, the keys they have, they can't hold it again. They have looked for bags. And when they see you, sometimes they look at you and say, I know this door. I saw it before. When I was 27, I saw the door. Let me tell you how the key looks like. So when you read their books and listen to them, that's what you are doing. They are helping to show you the key. Let me tell you how Satan cheats you. Sometimes he makes you think the keys you hold are not keys. And you throw them. And the thing is, when you throw them, if you are starting with God, you will go back. You have to remember where you threw them and start sweeping again. Koinonia, hear me. You may not have the car yet, but you have the key. You may not have the house yet, but you have the key. Man of God, hear me. You have not started the church yet, but these are your members. Hidden in the keys that you hold. Listen, this is a very ancient secret that God taught me. Stay, stay on my word. Don't just be educated in terms of knowledge that pops up. Learn it. I remember when I found the law of encounter. Wow, this is the law that controls the power of God. I remember when I found the law of honor. It blew my mind. The master key. There are, I will, ah, why did I go ahead of myself? Because I will show you that there are master keys. When you don't find some keys, you can use some keys to find the ones you are missing. Yes, sir. They are called master keys. Master keys. Master keys. When you find these keys. And sometimes, the door that will open is the door that your child's life depends on. It's not every door that relates to you directly. Some doors are the keys that will feed your family. Some doors are the keys that will preserve you. This is what God gave Joseph. He said, Joseph, take this. Let me tell you this. Look at me. Those of us waiting for God to just bring physical things to bless you, I'd like you to be matured and think like a believer. Thank God for miracle a lot. But if that's all you are waiting for, you are not thinking well. This is it. I commend you. I, look, he's, he's teaching you. He's saying, look, stop wasting your time. I hand you over to God and to the word of his grace. Number one, it is able to build you so that you are stable, immovable, unshakable. Then number two, you will find keys here. 
and you will pick them up. You will get to some of these doors and find people who were standing there before you were born. They are still there. Standing at those doors and knocking and knocking and here you come from nowhere. That's how you show forth his praises. Because many of them will be saying this door cannot open. We've been at this door from 1951 and here comes O warm Jacob empowered by light and you turn it it may be an old door, but you swing it open. A time will come when they notice that you have mastered the art of opening doors. Then Gentiles will come to your light. You will no longer look for them. Listen. This is the cure for complex. This is the cure for complex. No amount of good clothes, good hair, good anything can give you what this will give you. The real secret of confidence is the Holy Spirit living in you and the dexterity of the spiritual knowledge that you hold. They may persecute you, but let's get to a door. Keep talking while we get to a door. Keep bragging while we get to a door. Keep making noise while we get to... Keep mocking God. Let us just get to a door. Every mockery ends when you stand before a door because only a key opens that door. Some of you are giving diligence to what you are doing now. And you may not know what you are doing. Listen to me, my brothers and my sisters. People may laugh at you and mock at you. You've been in Koinonia for five years. You have nothing to show. No job, no husband, no money, no, no ministry, no business, no nothing. And sometimes you feel guilty. You have the keys. You have just not reached the door. And so you continue moving. And then one day, when you open that door, when God is ready to announce you, He can fast track 10 years of your life by keeping you on stage. And you say, Son, turn the key that opens the door to the anointing. And on that day, those who knew you will say, From whence did this come? And you say, I found a key. God gave me a key. From that one meeting, you may never rest again with the open doors that come. Open doors are only open because of the keys that open them. They that walked in darkness. It says, arise from the depression. Lack of light can bring real depression. Not just medical depression. A state where nothing works in a man's life. But many of us ignore the keys. And we are chasing shadows. If only my uncle gave me 5,000. I will never beg again. If only um, I wear a nice cloth, they will think, if only I do this and that. And God says, look, 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 look. You may be in that one room, but carry keys. Keys. Koinonia, this is what God is going to be doing these seven days. Keys. Some of you threw some keys you had. And God is going to be bringing you restoration. More than restoration of a property or restoration of a this and that. This is the real restoration. The keys of the kingdom. Let me tell you, fear a man who has held this. There is no power. There is no enchantment. There is no devil that will throw such a one. You keep watching that man, your eyes will only keep going higher. Because of the power of this. There are families that do not have even one key. They are not born again. Listen to me. From traditional worship, this is where they stand. Father does not have a key. Mother does not have a key. Sister does not have a key. There are some of you who want to get into ministry, no key. I'm called. I'm anointed. They poured oil on my head, but were keys given to you. You just get up and your first assignment requires ten keys. And you stand there stupefied with no keys. You are not ready for life when you do not have keys. No matter how you think you are ready. Listen, while we prepare to start tomorrow, you are going to have to cry. Which key don't I have? 
be honest and be sincere. Tonight's meeting is a charge. Have I found the key to the grace of God? Have I found the key to the favor of God? Have I found the key? Hallelujah. You can hear like, like Imam was sharing. There was a key that he found. So when trouble came, they would have killed that person for nothing. And he engaged that key. Don't wait until they give you a report before you start checking. And then you say, ah, I don't have the key. Is someone challenged tonight? Brothers, learn this key. Life is harsh. Let me tell you sincerely. I don't mean to discourage you. What this is to life is the keys that you hold. Woe betimes a man that steps into life not holding any key. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. I search for these keys and I continue to search for them. And when you find them, they are life to those who find them. They are life to those who find them. You need diligence. You need diligence. My brothers and my sisters, we are going to pray. You need diligence. The keys are not just at plain sight. Sometimes you may need to search and search and search and search and search and lie down there. There are times that the Holy Spirit will have to be the one to come and say, look, turn your eyes. Look there. That's the key. Some of these keys cannot be found by the eyes of men. It will take the Holy Spirit to open your eyes. For this cause, I bow my knees. Ephesians chapter 1. Please give it to us. And verse 17. He's praying for the church. Ephesians chapter 1. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul is praying. The Father of glory may give unto you what? The spirit of wisdom. And revelation in the knowledge of him. 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Some versions say being flooded with light. That you may know. That you may know. That you may know. That's the key. That you may know. Because what you do not know will keep you where you are forever. You would think that life will just move you forward automatically. You will never move forward automatically. Not in ministry. Not in career. Whatever it is. Even if there are attacks, there is what you will need to know for your victory. Victory will not just come. If it would just come like that, some of our loved ones would have been free. Step by step. You are leading me. And I will follow you. All of my days. Step by step. You lead me, and I will follow you. As I travel for meetings, and I see the wonder-working power of spiritual knowledge and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I am grateful to God. But sometimes I ask the question, what if I didn't have the key? Do you know someone will die? If you don't get this key. And that someone may be you. It may not always be someone around you. Arise. Shine. Arise. Shine. Give God glory. John chapter 1 and verse 6. The Bible says there was a man sent from God. His name was John. He says the same came for a witness. Verse 7. That he came to bear witness to the truth. Are we together now? And that all men might through his witness believe. All men might through that witness believe. There are people who will never believe in Jesus until they see your light. 
I've been preparing myself for these seven days. Lord, what do I not know? Thank God for what I know. But I need the one that I do not know. If you have 30 over 100, you got 30, but you failed. You didn't get zero, but you didn't get enough to pass. So ignore the 30 and focus on the 70. Even if you have 80 over 100. You see, in this kingdom, it is what the 10. Sometimes the one key you don't have can rubbish all the other keys that you have. One key. Hezekiah was at the point of death. Chapter 38 of Isaiah. The word of the Lord came to Isaiah the son of Amos. Go and tell Hezekiah to put his house in order. He will not recover from the sickness. A real prophet. And Hezekiah said, man of God, I honor you, I obey you. You can go. And he turned his face. Where you know what to do. You can listen to people and say, I've heard you. May God bless you. When you close the door, you pick your keys. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There is a name. Ah! Blind Bartinius. He had been trying many things but not the key. People will pass and he say, help me, wicked people. He didn't open the door. One day he learned about the mercy of God. And he said, come now. Let that opportunity come. As soon as Jesus was passing Jericho for the last time, he no longer said, help me. He said, thou son of David, have mercy. The moment Jesus had that mercy, he said, ah, the cross, the cross, mercy. Because when you call mercy, Jesus must stand. Mercy. What should I do for you that I might see? And that was it. That man would have died there. Thou son of David. Do you know when to call him Jesus and when to call him the son of David? Do you know what occasion necessitates? Thou son of David, have mercy on me. I want to walk in exact knowledge. I want to walk in knowledge. Spiritual knowledge. Worthy, worthy is the lamb that was slain. And he has redeemed them. Us now. Unto God. He says, I, I beheld and I saw a lamb that had been slain. Weep not, he said, for the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, is worthy, qualified to open the book and unlock the scroll. He says, and when I looked, I saw a lamb that had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, seven eyes, seven eyes, the Spirit of God, providing for perfect revelation. Seven eyes. Seven eyes. Seven eyes. Apostle, when will I rise? The day the light to lift you comes. Will I rise in August if you want to? Will I rise this April if you want to? Will I rise in May if you want to? The choice is yours. Your addiction to his light is what culminates to your rising. Please hear me as I preach to you. Time will never change anything. It will take light. The entrance of thy word Give it light, not just knowledge, light, and then understanding to the simple. Hallelujah. Something happened to me today that almost brought tears. And I said, God, how many people may never, 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 never be able to experience certain dimensions of your hand simply because of this light that they do not know. You know, many times when I'm praying, truly speaking, I think in the last one month, my prayer life now, I don't even know what to say again. Many times I just kneel down and tears just come out of my eyes. Thank you. Thank you for knowledge. Thank you for knowledge. Thank you for knowledge. Thank you for taking away ignorance. you for taking away ignorance separating me from darkness 
is the power of God. Is someone willing to pray tonight? Lord, I'm tired of where I am. I don't want to lie to myself again. I'm tired of this realm. There is a dimension in God that He seeks to bring me. This can't be it. God is so much bigger than this. Oh, this can't be it. God is so much bigger than this. One more time. This can be for me. God is so much. Listen. Was it not ignorance that cost Cain? If Cain knew how to do it well, he would have gotten it. Cain did it, but he did it wrongly. God is no respecter of persons, but he will respect his ordinances forever. There is something we do not know. The Bible says the Lord is nigh them that call upon him. Until you have a broken and a contrite heart. Say Lord I have seen this and I thank you. But open my eyes in this area. Is someone desperate to cry tonight? Open my eyes. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4. Please give us an amplified. It's a popular scripture here. You know it. Let's start from verse 3. Habakkuk chapter 3 from verse 3 and 4. It says, God coming from Teman, you know, and the Holy One from Mount Paran. It says, and His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of His praise. Verse 4. Very powerful scripture. It says, and his brightness was like the sunlight. Rays streamed from his hand. And there in that light was the hiding place of his power. God's power is hidden in his light. Remember the teaching last week. His divine power has given us all things. But that divine power comes at the instance of the light. So grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge. The greater your knowledge, the greater your exact spiritual illumination. That is the depth and the dimension of power that you will command. The Bible says to be careful lest what you call light be darkness. You can call darkness light for many years. Please open your mouth and cry and say, Lord, damage darkness from my life. Drive it far from my life. Drive it far from my life. Take away darkness from my life. Take away darkness, oh God, from my life. Listen, open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. What are you turning for? What are you turning to? That's the prayer now. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Thank you. 
into a new season because of the light that is coming and because of what you will do with it your heart must be prepared to receive it listen just one spiritual law that is well understood can turn your life around Ignorance. 
transiting you from being general and putting you in a spectacular position that everyone that sees you will know that you are called by the name of God. It may not look like it, but my brothers and sisters, don't forget that this is God we are talking about. God is changing every in my life. God is starting something new in my life. He won't stop. 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 He won't I like you to cross the spirit of distraction. Distraction is a wicked spirit. You will listen to every other thing but the word that will lead you. If there is same for this word, the word is a messenger. It will be coming to people. A prophet of big mysteries in the kingdom. Lift your voice and cross distraction. in the Bible that can fight the world. One of it is called the traditions of men. It says you have made the world of non-effect through the tradition. Tradition. You don't have the flexibility to adjust. This is always how I've been taught. This is how I know it. The Bible says you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin. Lord, do something to my wine skin that will give way so that a new wine skin will come. Lift your voice and pray. I'm tired of the old wine skin. I've exhausted the results that come with the old wine skin. Are you praying? New wine. New wine. New wine. In my wine skin. New wine. in the wilderness. Unbelief. 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 You share the word of God and all kinds of contemplations begin to come. Give us Romans chapter 4 please. Romans chapter 4. We are praying. We are preparing our heart for tomorrow. Romans chapter 4. Let's study Father Abraham in one minute. And learn from him the principles that make for true faith. Abraham. From verse 17. As it is written. I have made thee a father of many nations. You are going to be sharing things like this. But the Bible says before whom he believed. Even God who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were. 18. 18. Who against hope? Some of you are going to have to believe and hope against hope. Because the things God will tell you to, to do or the things God will tell you will come back to life are already dead and have been long dead. And yet God will tell you they will come back to life. He believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according as that which was spoken. Next verse 19. He says, and not being weak in faith, he considered not. This is not a week to start considering. Okay, now that prophecy is coming, 
that this will happen, let me calculate. If only my uncle called me, no, that one is not faith. He considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Next verse. He staggered not. You believe now, and then as soon as you share the grace, you are just with someone and he says, Oh boy, we only said amen. No, even me, God knows I don't believe it. You are staggering. Fascinations of your convictions. You believe this today and by tomorrow you change. But was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Lord, I challenge on belief as a spirit. Every word that is coming from you, I, 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 I obtain the faith to receive it. Lift your voice and Those outside, please pray. Those online, pray. I receive the faith. quality required to receive meekness pride can destroy pride can destroy you are going to pray and say Lord my heart is open to learn I receive the heart of a student in this school of the spirit teach me I am not too proud to learn teach me lift your voice and pray Let me tell you this. There are some of you, please give me this cup. There are some of you, this is what you plan to bring for the prayer and fasting. A small cup like this. Lord, I know you. You are like the man with one talent. You are a hard man. I know you. You are not a giver. You don't have the heart to lavishly give. So I brought a small cup to receive. He will fill the cup. There are other people who will bring a drum and say, Lord, I know you can feel it. There are other people who will buy a horse and hang it and say, Lord, I'm plugging it from you to me. Not even a drum. Like plugging it to God and plugging it to myself and let everything that can flow, flow. Even in the good soil, it gave three kinds of results. 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. It is not the sower. It is the heart that the seed fell on. Lord, it must be 100 fold this time around. It must be 100 fold. I will not be blessed on day 3, day 5 and day 6. I will be blessed from day 1 to the last day. Last prayer point. Lord, as I'm standing in this conference, every one of my family members, I connect through the power of the bloodline. They must be part of this testimony. Listen, listen. If you are blessed alone, you are still not free. You have to pray that they too may be saved. That God will also bring them. He says, for the promise is unto you and your children and your children's children 
as many as are far off, even they that the Lord will call. The promise is for everybody, not for a few people. So we are going to pray. If you can mention your loved ones by name, I'd like you to mention them and say, Lord, they must be part of this conference in the spirit. As I'm standing, I also agree for a visitation for them. I agree for a visitation for them. I agree for a visitation for them. Call them by name. Those who are not born again, this is the week that they must encounter Jesus Christ. Those who are wallowing in ignorance, sincere for ignorance, this is the season, oh God. 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 Are you praying? This is the season. Your voice from the depth of your heart and head. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, for tonight Genesis 21 verse 1 and 2 may this be someone's testimony Genesis 21 from verse 1 and 2 let's read it together one to read and the Lord visited Sarah as had said and the Lord did to Sarah as he has spoken next verse so Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at when the set time which the Lord had spoken there is a set time that's the key word it's not just that the answer came but that the answer came at the set time he said thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her, yea, the set time. This is the last prayer. Lord, I declare that this is my set time. Do to me like you have spoken. Do to me like you have spoken. I declare that this is my set time. Do to me like you have spoken. Do to me like you have spoken. above all names we decree and we declare that these seven days will be seven days of fire will be seven days of true revival will be seven days of a strange dispensing of the mysteries of the kingdom we call them seven days of strange wonders. We call them seven days of divine visitation. Seven days of supernatural shifts. Seven days of encounters. Let me tell you sincerely, the kind of encounters that many of you will have these seven days will be what you have just had people say they used to have. I have prayed this and I have agreed with God 
for strange angelic visitations. All kinds of prophetic visitations. And the angel came to Daniel. And Gabriel came to Mary. The ministry of angels in this conference. That God is opening you up. At the apex of his apostolic ministry. Look at a man's hunger that I may know him. That I may know him. Paul. I hope you know the doctrine of scripture starts from the writings of Paul. The Acts of the Apostles down to Revelation. The Gospels do not contain doctrines. No. The doctrines of scripture are embedded there. Some of them were just shadows as presented. Paul single-handedly wrote to thirds. Do you know what it means for a man to create the study curriculum of the church? It was not just Jesus that wrote it. Paul sat down and wrote to thirds. The, the limit of our spiritual growth is scripture. That is the boundary given to us for growth. And a man sat down by the spirit and wrote it. Yet when that man finished writing it, he said that I may know him. That I may know him. Oh God that I may know you. That I may know you. I have seen your power, but that I may know you. A man of God said he went for a pastor's conference one time and Pastor E.A. Adeboye was there. And when it was time for all the men of God to pray, he said he wanted to lie down close to him to hear what kind of prayer a man at this realm would pray. And he said when he lay down all through for more than one hour, all that he was saying is mercy, mercy Lord, mercy, mercy Lord, mercy. A young minister there saying power, power Lord, result, open doors, oh God offering, send helpers. That, that, that small kiosk like building must be completed whereas there is a man here with kilometers as an estate and his language and his desire mercy he has learned that one of the most important things is the mercy of god are you getting what i'm telling you now hunger hunger if you're a pastor here please minimize just praying for power and cry for hunger go back and buy the same new notebooks you bought that the spirit of revelation came to honor it you have stopped buying it go and buy them again go and find a place where you used to sit alone with god i'm too busy i have counseling to do i have mentees and sons in ministry and you would die there and they will go to the next move because they are followers You are worried and obsessed about many things. But one thing is needful. To sit at the master's feet. Please listen to me. The things you did. That brought you to this realm. Go back and start creating the atmospheres for them again. Hear what I'm telling you. This is not the issue of I'm a big man. No, 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 no. No. I have my notebooks. You see my notebooks. I can, I can gather all of them for you. From the time I started working with God. When I go for retreats, I go with all of them. All of them. Lord, what did you say? My God, look at what you said. I bought new ones for tomorrow. I buy it like this and I show the Lord. I say, Lord, see it. Your student is here again. Packs of viral. I'm ready. Because if you are not ready to hear and listen and write, he's not ready to speak. The level that Koinonia is right now is already exhausted there. I'm already preparing and aligning for the next seasons. Not today. The preparation of yesterday brought us to where we are today. Thank God for what God is doing around the world through this ministry. But my brothers and my sisters, is child's play. And if we remain complacent, clapping, we will become like the old wine. 
we must be at the cutting edge of God's move through hunger. Genuine hunger. All that will have men and women of God again. Who will organize program for others but for yourself. You organize a program with the same energy for others for yourself. Next point. My time is up. My God. You want to come up higher in the spirit. You will need an encounter with the spirit of prayer and supplication. Please write it down. This is one of the dimensions where the prayer ministry is irreplaceable. If it is the next level and the next move of God, there is no, there is nothing you will do to replace the ministry of prayer. Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3. Please write it quickly. Call unto me and I will answer. The revelation is an answer. It's a response. I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that are not yet captured in your experience call on to me call on to me let me tell you something I've observed and I, I say this respectfully and I think it's a correction that the body of Christ needs to get there are few believers who pray for edification most believers have left the ministry of edification through prayer most of our prayer is either warfare or request. There's nothing wrong with warfare. There's nothing wrong with request. But let me tell you, the dimension of the gross dimension of prayer is for edification. Where you don't enter the place of prayer with a prayer request. Where less than 5% of your prayer is in English. You are not just entering to harass God. You are not just empty to say, Lord, there are powers sitting on my destiny. Live destiny. The goal is edification. And you feel the growth. You feel the stretching from your spirit, man. Very few believers pray for edification. You can know it. Because you stand near them, they are weak. As weak as whatever. They love God, but their capacity is weak. Strength is discernible. Is why we fall off over everything. You don't get this miracle. You don't get that miracle. You harass God all around. But there is a level of strength and stability. Please hear me. The next move of God will come on the wings of genuine prayer. Thank God for miracle service. Don't get me wrong. There is a place of supplication and all of that. And there is a place of intercession for others. But can I tell you this? Those who were here many years ago in Zaria will tell you, there were few times when many people today that are greatly used by God around, there were few times where people took out time to actually pray for their own request. Believers who gather and just are praying, no prayer point, no prayer request, is towards the end of the prayer. No, just say, Lord, just to let you know we have not eaten. And we trust your grace for supplies. Just to let you know that we have this, this, this issue. But the average believer right now prays. But our prayer does not bring the level of growth and stamina. Because that prayer is largely driven by lust. The need for things. So I can go to pray and spend six hours there. Correct. Well done. But that six hours is almost five hours of harassing God. When will the power come, oh God? Is that prayer? That's inquiry. You've not started praying. There are few believers who can, who can pray if a request is not, if a prayer point is not raised. You want them to pray, you have to raise a prayer point. Say this, then they say, oh, I am now follow and I pray it. Turn it into a prayer point. But when you say, let's pray, they just stand and say, so what should we do now? And other people are praying and they are just watching. But when it's all right, everybody stand up. 
Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, my life, my life, this and that, this and that. I'm not saying anything is wrong with that. But have you learned the edification ministry of prayer? The edification ministry. To the point, it used to be a big deal to be filled with the Holy Ghost. If you were not filled with the Holy Ghost, it was as if you were naked. When believers gather by yourself, you will find one brother and say, Sorry, can you pray for me? It used to be a project. But right now, there are believers who can be in a place for many years. They know about being filled with the Holy Spirit. And they don't argue it, but they have not seen the need. They just feel, one day if it happens, let me just be filled. Capacity. Capacity. There are, set, there are certain levels of grace and anointing that is a waste to come to you. It's like pouring a drum of water inside a cup. It doesn't make any sense. You need to expand. Please tell somebody, expand, expand, expand. You don't expand by preaching. You don't expand by going for ministration. You don't expand just by... by doing Bible study for others. You don't expand by conducting deliverance for others. No. You have to lock yourself. Lock yourself. Look at Jesus. The word of God filled with the Holy Spirit. While others are sleeping, they are the ones who need Him. He will get up in the morning and pray for hours. It was a daily habit to the point that when it was time for Him to go to the cross, from the communion, the upper room, He branched gate seven in. And prayed there. He spake a parable to the end. Prayer is an instrument that we can use to correct anomalies. I agree. But please hear me. Learn to get into the place of prayer without prayer points. The prayer point is you. The prayer point is you. Many of those things will be answered when you are answered. The prayer point is you. There are many, many requests that are a revelation of weakness. When you access strength with God, you will check and not find the prayer points again. And you are looking at time. You are not praying. You are praying. You, you pop, tom, tom. You are not praying. Five minutes, you know. Let me tell you this. God loves everybody, but He rewards seriousness. God rewards seriousness. There are pastors who are like that. Every two minutes, you are leaking something or swallowing something. There are times that you go to pray, my brothers and my sisters, you don't know whether you are on earth or you are in heaven. You don't know. It's a realm. There are many things about prayer when it's said, most believers don't know. Because that is a progression in a realm that you must get to for that thing to make sense. We must pray. Our weaknesses are becoming very glaring. We must pray for capacity. In fact, most people never sought anointing. It was a byproduct of some of these things. They didn't even know that anointing was to be sought directly. Now, all and sundry, you see a lazy all around, crying for Benny Hinn's grace in, in the secret place. Five minutes. Lord, a, a double portion of what is on Benny Hinn. Let it, and God is trying to say, no, no, no. I can give you. Just, I don't want any. You know, if you are God, you give good gifts to those who love you. And God said, this is not how it works. Have regard for Benny Hinn, not just God. You want a double portion of his anointing and you are there five minutes snoring back. Five minutes snoring back. No. Revive your prayer life. Revive your prayer life. Revive the edification dimension of your prayer life. 
Revive the edification dimension of your prayer life. Revive the edification dimension of your prayer life. Please hear me. Revive the edification dimension of your prayer life. Don't just pray needs. Don't just pray warfare. Pray to grow. Pray to grow. That's how many of us enter the realms of visions. It was not a conscious request. You pray your way till you break the gate that closes this realm and the next realm. Prayer. Like a system of transport. Revive your prayer life. Say Amen. There are men of God who don't pray. They are praying for me. That's a deception. It's a deception from the pit of hell. Let me tell you this. If you are a man of prayer and you are edified through prayer, there is a signature that, that the strength and the health of your spirit man is written upon you. Are we together now? Your communication and everything shows that there is a track record of prayer. Precious and by the message of the Lord, we believe that this message will definitely get to you and even as it is getting to you, it is a yes that it will get to your loved ones. That your loved ones, your family and friends will be partaker of this divine mandate by going into all the world, sharing the gospel, preaching this same gospel to every creature of the earth. It is a mandate that we have trust the Lord for long to live by, to live on and to see that Jesus is glorified and Jesus is revealed. Join us in this mandate as you become a partaker simply by sharing this video to your loved ones, families and friends and also liking this video, dropping a comment, tell us what miracle God has done in your life. Tell us what um, um, testimony that God has wrought in your life by the means of these videos and by the mouth of the Lord we trust that His word comes to pass even via his servant, Apostle Joshua Selman, on this platform, Reflector Hub TV, the mandate and the word of God is inevitably sure that it will fulfill and find expression in your life. Join us on this journey even as we embark on me. God's word which you've listened to has, and I believe must have truly blessed your life. A sure blessing it is. Do well to also be a partaker of this work by letting others know that Jesus is free. Thank you and God bless you. See you in our next video.